All right, we're talking 2-7. This is our last lesson, and it is called uh, formulas and literal equations. So formulas we're going to be dealing with first, and then just basically literal equations, which, by the way, formulas are mostly literal equations. And I like formulas, and you will like formulas when you're dealing, especially like geometry. Like what's the formula for the area of a square? Length times width, and even easier is just side times side because the length and the width are the same for a square, right? What's the area for the air? Sorry, what's the formula for the area of a triangle? Base times height divided by two. What's the formula for the area of a circle? Area of a circle. Pi. Pi times radius squared. Right. There are a lot of formulas. But when you get a formula, sometimes you're trying to find the area. Like, what is the area? So I got to know what pi is. I got to know what the radius is. Square it, multiply those two. But sometimes they give you the area, and you have to find out what was the radius of that circle. So you don't always have to find what's all by itself, like area or perimeter or volume. You sometimes have to find some other part because they already gave you the area, the volume, or the perimeter. So how are we going to do that? We'll start off with our first formula. The most basic one. Well, not the most basic one, but one of the most basic ones. You guys know what this formula is for? It's D equals RT. Yes, sir? I have a question. Okay, and someone try to think, what does that stand for? Like, if anyone remembers what that stands for. But go ahead. Um, for the quiz, <coughs> weren't we supposed to get 100 because we could check every problem that we said that we should have gotten? That's true. Oh, that's right. So maybe it wasn't in the number. All right. So who, what's the formula, or what is this standing for? Anyone know? No, not diameter. I'll give you a hint. D stands for distance. Distance, distance equals range. Range. Distance equals rate times time. And you could, and for us, we kind of think of it, distance equals speed times the time. Okay? So this is a very generic formula, very easy, very practical. For example, if I'm driving down the highway at at an even or an average 60 miles per hour for two hours I would get 60 times 2 which would get me a total distance of 120 uh, miles in this case yeah so 60 miles per hour times two hours 120 so you use that a lot but sometimes you get problems and I'm trying to allude to this I traveled a hundred miles on my trip 100 miles on my trip and I went for four hours. So T equals four. What was my speed or what was, what was my rate? So how would you find it? Okay, yeah, divide both sides by four. You know, if you're doing algebraically, 100 divided by four would be? 25. So that would be my rate, my speed, right? Okay, is there a formula to find the rate? Is there a formula to find the rate? So in this equation, uh, is there another formula that I can use to find the rate is what I'm asking for it. And the answer to that question is, of course. Okay, which one's the rate? Which variable? Just a moment, Elijah. What's the variable for rate? R. Okay, I have right now a formula for distance, but we can find the formula for rate by taking this distance formula and doing something that sounds bad, but it's not. Manipulating it. Have you guys heard of manipulate? Normally, it's a, it's a negative thing. I'm going to manipulate the students to do what I want. But manipulate actually just means to handle, to handle in a way that, so it has negative connotations, but this is positive. Okay, look at your variable r. Can you get r all by itself? Can you get r by itself? Think of it. Well, you're like, okay, what's happening to r right now? It's being multiplied by t. What undoes multiplying by t? Dividing both sides by t. Okay, when I do that, I'll show my next step here on the right. I end up with d over t equals r. Because what happened to the t's on the right? Cancel they cancel each other out. So what's the formula for rate? Rate equals distance divided by time. And you're like, are you sure about that? 100 miles 
uh, four hours, 25 miles per hour, and it fits. These two, the original formula, D equals RT, and D over T equals R, are referring to the same variables, and you can get the same answers on either one. Yes, sir, go ahead. Yeah, that's when you're starting to get into calculus. So this is a basic algebra, but yeah, in real life, your, your speedometer is doing this, right? You're slowing down, you're speeding up, you're kind of... Okay, and I love this question, cruise control. When you guys learn how to drive, I put cruise control on long trips. Does it stay exactly at 60 if you set it at 60? No. When you're going, like your car doesn't know you're going to get up on a hill. So when you start that hill, the speedometer goes down a little bit, but then it picks back up. And then when you're going down a hill, your speed starts picking up a bit, but your speedometer, your cruise control brings it back down. Even with cruise control, you're still doing this. Wait, so, so you're not, well, sorry? You're on the highway. Yeah, same thing. Straight, straight path. If you hit a bump, your, your speedometer does move. It doesn't always stay at 60. Yeah. So this is not always, you're not always at 60. And if you want to test it out, just watch your parents or your older siblings. If they're on cruise control, you'll see that speedometer or you'll see the numbers. They can move a little bit. Okay, anyway, um, I want us, uh, you don't have to erase it. I want you to give me the formula for time according to this formula. So you do it, you just come up with it, tell me what it is in just a moment. I want the formula for time. Like time? Yeah, time. Using distance and rate. How can you describe time? Using distance and rate. <coughs> the same thing, yeah. <coughs> you can do an airplane. Airplane's like 600 miles per hour or 400 miles per hour. Sorry, 400 miles per hour. It's like 400, yeah, sorry. The 600 is too much. Okay, so like three to 400, and then you can see how, how many hours you've been up there, and you can tell me the time. Okay. Okay, anyway. Jack, a uh, heart. What is the formula for time according to distance and rate? D, sorry, sorry. D, um, over. D equals D over R. D over R. Okay, so we have these three equations. Right? You have these three equations. These are all formulas because this one gets me what? Distance. This one gets me rate. This one gets me. And it, they're all the same. Uh, variables and all all problems for distance, rate, and time can fit in all three of these. But sometimes I want to use time. I want to get time, or I want to get rate or distance. So you can manipulate. All right, here's another formula. It gets it's going to get tougher. Here's another formula for converting Fahrenheit to Celsius. Okay, so we use Fahrenheit, but sometimes you see Celsius. In fact, the whole world around us is Celsius. So how do you convert? So the formula for Fahrenheit to Celsius, or this is actually Celsius to Fahrenheit, 9 fifths C, i make sure I get this right here, plus 32. Okay. <clears throat> and I, I test it out with an easy one. If you are zero degrees Celsius, what temperature are you Fahrenheit? 32, right? Like freezing point. So if you had... Celsius being zero, what's zero times 9.5? Zero. zero, zero plus 32. Three. So you see how it fits that? What's another one that you know? You know the conversion, Celsius to Fahrenheit. Do you know boiling point? 100. Celsius is 212. 212 Fahrenheit. All right, ready? Let's see if that works. So put in uh, 100, so 9 fifths times 100, and figure it out. See what you get. Excuse me. And hopefully you get 212. Okay, did you get 212? Or are you getting, I guess I should say, getting 212? So does this formula work for the two freezing point and boiling point temperatures? Yeah, and it works for all of them. Uh, what's, the temp what's the temperature today? Anyone know what it's going to be? The high, the high. The high is like 88. 88, okay. What's that in, what's that in, excuse me. 
What is that in Celsius? So 88 Fahrenheit is what in Celsius? So in this same equation, what do you think you're going to have to do? Instead of filling in Celsius, you're going to fill in Fahrenheit. So we said 88 equals 9 fifths C plus 32. Well, you can't solve that, right? Okay, how would you solve it? Go ahead and do it. You're trying to find C. And um, you can round because it might be like a decimal point. Just round. <clears throat> what would you do first? Uh, Will? You would subtract 32 from both sides. Subtract 32 from both sides. And then what would you do to finish it off? Me? Uh, let's go with Nelson. You multiply five ninths on both sides. Good, five ninths. On the quiz, guys, when you're multiplying by the reciprocal, excuse me, by a reciprocal, make sure it's a, it is the reciprocal, five ninths in this case, both sides. Excuse me. And then what would you get here? Roughly, it's not not perfect. 30, 31? What, what is it? 30 point, did anyone get the decimal? One, 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 okay, so 30, we're just going to go with 30. It's approximately 30 degrees Celsius. So if you look like you're going somewhere, and you're like, it says Celsius, and you're like, oh my goodness, that's so cold. Uh, no, that's pretty warm, 88. So... We have to be able to convert here. And there are shortcuts. Like you can do it mentally e a lot easier, more easily, but um, you do need to go be able to do exact. So it's easier and it's mental and we're taking trees? <laughs> yeah. Wait, I didn't think of the trees, actually. Okay, anyway. Yeah, but you also need to get the exact. And you can. Okay. Um, what if I wanted, okay. This is the formula, listen to me, this is the formula right here to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. Is there a formula to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius? There is. What is it? How would I find it? Can it does anyone know what, how I'd find the opposite? So this is from Celsius to Fahrenheit. I want Fahrenheit to Celsius. Okay, you can, you can fill in, but there's actually a form that has C equals blah, 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 and you just put in the numbers where they belong. What do you think? Uh, is it C equals 9 fifths F minus 32? Okay, you're getting there. Yeah, you're getting there. Ready? Solve for C up there. Get C all by itself. Get it all by itself. What would I have to do? Is, you already did this in the last problem. You subtract 32 from both sides first. You'll get F minus 32 equals 9 fifths C. Multiply both sides by 5 ninths. And when you do that, you got to be very careful. Remember, we said both sides. So I'm going to multiply this by 5 ninths. OK, this would cancel out with that. But 5 ninths multiplied by both sides. So you have to multiply it like this. So your formula would be this. And this is to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius. You want to try it? Yes, you do. Uh, what was, uh, oh, what's normal body temperature for Fahrenheit? Rounded. 98.6, we'll go 99. Can we do 99? So what would that be Celsius? That's a fever. <laughs> a fever, I think, is like three or four above that, two or two or three. If you're over a certain amount, you could die. You get brain damage. OK, anyway, uh, let's go 99. What is that in Celsius? So 99 degrees Fahrenheit is what in Celsius approximately? It might be, it might be a decimal. So 99. So you're going to put in 99 here and see if you can figure out what C is approximately, because they're, they're off sometimes. You may begin. You're allowed to do it right now. No, because it's the internal body temperature that's above 99 or 100. That's when you, that's an internal fever. Like if you get burnt, you're getting burnt by 200, or sorry, like 250, 300, but you're not getting, uh, well, it's an external fever because you're getting burnt, but you're not having an internal fever because your body's not, yeah, you, you'd be disintegrated if your body, internal body temperature was. What if you 
300 degrees. Good to know. Yeah, you're probably going to die. <laughs> Any other questions about what not to do in life? <laughs> no, I don't know if you'll die, but you will get burnt and it will be severe. But, and you might die. I don't know. I would not do. Uh, parents, be careful with your children. They are going to make bad decisions. Please protect them. <clears throat> All right. Um, what's 99 minus 32? 67. 67. And then what's 67 times 5 ninths about? Anyone get that? 37. 37. I got one with 37. I'm not bad yet. I'm one. I was talking about more than Yeah. Anybody? 37. You got that too? 37. I need a third. Yeah, what's 37? 5 ninths is what? Um, 67. 37. 37. Okay. 37. All right, so 37. So... 99 degrees, uh, again, rounded internal body temperature, normal, is what in Celsius? 37. 37. So like it, someone says, man, check your temperature. And those scanners, you know, like those forehead scanners, they can do Celsius. So I scanned Darius. <gasps> 37 degrees, man. This guy is freezing up inside. Darius, are you okay? You don't even look like you're cold. That must be bad. Uh, that's normal body. Normal body. Um, that's dealing with formulas. You can manipulate them to get whatever, whatever value you want. So if I wanted, if I wanted Fahrenheit, I'm going to use this one. If I wanted Celsius, I'm going to use this one. Okay. It just depends on which one I want. All right. But there are other equations that are not formulas. They're just equations such as three times D plus M. So this is not a formula for anything. It's just an equation. Okay. If I, listen, if I told you to solve, what's the problem? Raise your hand. What's the problem? I just said solve. Jack? Well, like three doesn't go to eight. Okay, you, you, you get fractions or decimals. That's the problem. If I said solve, guys, when, when someone says solve, they, they mean get the value of a variable. And if I just said to solve, you'd be like, what do you want me to solve? So in these problems, they're going to say, in this case, for this problem, solve for D. So solve for the variable D. You get D by itself. You may begin. Get D by itself. So you're like, what? What are you supposed to do? Look at what's happening to D. What's happening to D first? Add it with M, then it's being uh, multiplied, by three. multiplied by 3. Okay, so how do you undo? So remember, you got to undo it, reverse order. So not subtracting first, uh, divide. 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 Divide both sides by 3. Oh, no. It's a fraction. Okay. Well, here's what I'm going to get. Uh, D plus M equals 8 thirds. You just leave it 8 thirds. Okay. But is D by itself? No, we have to subtract. subtract M from both sides. Subtract M from both sides. And this is your final answer. D is now by itself. It's solved for is 8 thirds minus M. But you don't want to figure out what 8 thirds No, you can say 2 and 2 thirds if you want to, but that's fine. Or 2.6, 2 2.3. 2 no, 2.6 repeating. But you don't have these. That's it. You solve for D. Why is this useful? Because you actually get very, a lot of, I wish I could tell you uh, equations in all these applications are one var variable, but you guys get equations that have multivariables. Like there are equations for my foot size. Like how can I tell what size shoe I should wear? There's an equation for it. And you can put every one of your uh, foot size, I'll give it to you actually in a little bit. What are those different sizes based on an equation? So you're like, are you thankful that you have the right shoe size? So based on the equation, yeah. you can figure And you can figure it out mathematically, which is, guys, if you're not appreciative toward that, I get it because we're, we're young, sometimes we don't think. Guys, that's good. It's not random. Sophie, your size blob, I'm not going to say it, because of your foot and because of this equation. And Olivia is a different size because her foot's this size, this equation. Same Wait, equation. So you, so you do one equation for your foot. Oh, there are equations for that too. 
but I don't I don't have that option. Mr. A, what happens to you when you have Say that again. What happens to you when you have no That's an error. You have no shoe size. And so it messes your feet up. Uh, so from the like uncomfortable to the like this hurts, I need to get something changed. So yeah, shoe size, it may not affect you like dramatically, but I've had shoes that were too tight and it hurts. And I've had shoes that are too loose and those are hard to work with or play with. So we do want good shoe sizes, that helps. Okay, if I told you to solve, there are actually many things wrong with this equation. What's your problem if I just said solve? We don't have all we don't know what, to solve. what to solve for. So I'm going to put, and in your homework, it's going to say very specifically, solve for Z. I want Z. So solve for Z. <clears throat> You're like, wait, Z's in two places. Can you get in one spot? Yes. So Michelle, what would you do to get Z in one spot? Good. Subtract 3z from both sides, and you're left with 9z minus a equals 7a. Okay? And then you're like, all right, what's happening to z? It's being multiplied by 9, being subtracted with a. So how do you undo that? Um, so remember, it was first being multiplied by 9, then subtracted with a, so I add a first. I do it. I unravel it. 9z equals 8a, right? Because it's 1a plus 7a. And then I divide both sides by 9. I get z equals 8. You could say 8 ninths a, or you could say 8a over 9. They're both the same. So then yes, you can say 8 ninths a, or 8a over 9. What if you said what a was? Then what did you have to do? Oh, you could, they could give you what uh, A is, but they, they won't give you what the values are. Okay, let's do the foot size. Let's see if it's actually accurate. Does anyone know their foot size? And guys, by the way, different companies are a little bit, they, they, they vary. Uh, let's go with, I'm going to go with Alex. What's your shoe size? My shoe size right now is 10. Okay, and you're sure it's 10? Yeah, it's 10. All right. Let's look at um, page 61. Let's see if it's going to be accurate. Page 61. On the try these, number seven. And Alex, we can't do this in class to verify it, but tonight you're going to do it for us so we can verify it. Because we're going to have to measure his foot in inches. And I don't, I don't feel like he has to do it right now. Okay. Shoe sizes and foot length are related by the formula S equals 3F minus 24, where S represents the shoe size and F represents the length of the foot in inches. So you got to give me inches. How long is the foot of a person who wears size 10 shoes? Uh, I'm 11 or 11 and a half, depending on the brand. Or, you know, 13, 14 sometimes. Oh, I had a friend um, in high school, and he wasn't a tall dude, so it wasn't like that, but he was, he was taller than me, and he's wearing 14, 15s. So I'm like, you got clown feet? No, because he, he's not tall. He's not that tall. Yeah. Cardinal? Oh, really? Wow. Maybe I was thinking of John. I don't know. Okay, here's the formula. S. <laughs> okay, Alex wears a size 10. We're going to see what his foot size in inches is. So where do I put the 10? On the S, that's his shoe size. And we're trying to find out what F is. So um, go ahead and find his uh, length in inches for his feet. And by the way, your feet, your two feet, I think they're different in size. What? One foot's lo a little longer than the other. Check that's, it out. That's what every foot? So uh, for every person. Yeah, like my, yeah. My feet are perfectly in the left foot. 
And I can, I can actually tell, even with my boys, Ezra and Titus, because when I'm putting on shoes, one of them is always easier to put in. I'm like, why is, oh yeah, because when they're, especially as they're growing quickly, one of them's a little bit smaller than the other, so it's easier to put in. No way. Okay, so yeah, I got this, and then Darius, you gave me the answer, 11 and a third. What units? Inches. Inches. That's, Alex, what you're going to have to measure tonight. Can get me to the nearest, get me to like the nearest um, half inch. Because if you're off a little bit, it's okay. Maybe the, you know, I don't know what, how you're going to do this. But can you do that for us, Alex? Four hours. Yes, you will do that. He just has to measure his foot tonight. Tell me if it's 11 and a third or close. Sorry? It's still the shoe size. Oh, but yeah, there are equations that can figure that out. And it's not even a how tall, it's like how long you're like, this bone is. It can tell you. They have probably equations for T-Rexes as well. All right. Last one we'll do together. And then I'll give you your assignment. Okay, this is the formula for the area of a parallelogram. Uh, time out, trapezoid, trapezoid is more technical. Parallelogram is actually very easy. It's a trapezoid, so a trapezoid is something like this. That's a trapezoid. Okay, so if I wanna find how many square units can fit into a trapezoid, I use this formula. And by the way, guys, I, I wish I can go into, I wish I could teach you geometry after tutoring so much. Comma? Yeah, it says B sub one plus B sub two. Yeah, yeah, we, we deal with these and it's useful. But my proof, you're gonna get a lot of formulas in geometry and some of you are gonna spend time memorizing them. This one, this one, this one. And there's a whole sheet, little half sheet, bunch of little formulas. Guys, they all base themselves off a rectangle's area. If you know what a rectangle's area is, really, you know how to find even a trapezoid or a circle. A circle's area is related to the rect area of a rectangle. And I'm like, oh man, if people just understood that. Right, but anyway, um, yes, this is B sub one or base sub one, base sub two. That just means this. In this figure, there's not just one base, there are two. So you gotta label them differently. They're not the same. Exactly, they're not the same, so. The height is the same. It's the distance, it's the perpendicular distance between the two bases. So that's the height. Oh, yeah. I guess you could. You could. But. I want you to solve for B sub 1. B, oh, not B sub one. B sub one is equal to what? That's your answer. I want, what does B sub one equal? You don't have the measurements. You don't need measurements. You're coming up with a formula. So you're coming up, okay, I, yes, I do not know what B sub one or any of those variables are, but what would be the formula for finding the first base? So you're like, uh, I don't know. Same step we've done every other problem. What's happening to B sub 1 first? Added with B sub 2. That's the first thing, right? Then it's being multiplied. You could say, you could break this into two steps, but you could say it's being multiplied by H and it's being multiplied by 1 half. What undoes that? Okay, you could divide by 1 half or multiply both sides by 2. Let's just try that out. Multiply both sides by 2. So what are you left with? Yeah, hold, you could do it in one step on that, this part, but maybe most of us are going to say just do it one step. 2a equals, and remember what happens to the half and the 2? They cancel each other out. h times b1 plus b2. Okay, so what's happening to b sub 1 still? It's being added, being multiplied. What do I do first? N not multiply by h, but divide both sides by h. 
And so you cancel those out, and you're left with 2a over h equals b sub 1 plus b sub 2. So what do you do to both sides next? You want, you're trying to find b sub 1? Subtract b sub 2 from both sides, and be careful how you do it. So I, actually, you do it, and we'll see what you get. Because you're going to get your final answer. b sub 1 equals 2a over h minus b sub 2. That's the, that's the answer. That's it. So 2a over h, and then you subtracted b sub 2, and that's it. So that's how you get b sub 1. Now, is that complicated? I think it is. I don't think it's like easy on the eyes, but it's the same process I took on every other problem. Just undo what's happening. Oh, which one? Is this going to be the subtract at the very end, B sub 2? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, right, B, I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't put that. So you get rid of it there, and then you end up with B sub 1 equals 2A over H minus B sub 2. Now, I flipped it around. You guys notice that it's, like, backwards? Mm -hmm. Do you know why I'm allowed to do that? Community. No. Associated. No. <laughs> reflexive. Reflexive. Ready? <clears throat> Your grade on that last quiz was 90%, right? So you would say, your grade, so we'll go with, uh, who got a 90 and is willing to admit it? All right, so Darius, will put D equals 90, right? Is it possible and allowed to say this? See, Reflexive. That's it. We got a 90. Uh, just on that quiz. As if we got a 90. When would we do this, like, normally? Like, when are we learning? Geometry, yeah. Geometry. Well, no, this is Algebra 1. This is Algebra 1, and you will use it more in Geometry. So you got to do it in both. Okay. Remember, D doesn't stand for Darius. It stands for Darius's quiz score. Oh. Right? Because, yeah, if it's saying for Darius, what does that mean? 90 miles? 90 gumballs? I don't know. It's Darius's quiz score. 90. Okay. Yeah, so you have to be specific with your variables. All right, your homework tonight. Can it be? Uh, 2 through 12 even. 16 to 22 even. All right, bye-bye, Swivel.